I would like to start off by welcoming all of you for the first of the DEP learning series. This is a series that we have kicked off at DEP to share our learnings with each other. And uh, it's all about uh, learning, collaborating, and uh, getting better with each other. So let me start with the topic. Uh, it is even more relevant in today's day, uh, which is how to be your uh, productive and effective best while working from home. Now, obviously, um, all of us are stuck working from home with the current COVID situation. But uh, to give you a little background, uh, roughly five years ago, I had some constraints due to which I took up the work from home position. I won't lie, uh, it was tough. While I loved what I did, uh, working from home comes with a lot of challenges of its own, as many of us are realizing now. Um, to name a few, um, I found it difficult to tell my friends and family uh, who didn't understand the working part, and it was just the at home part and would drop in at any hour. Um, I found myself working all the time, where I would wake up in the morning, log in at breakfast, um, continue to the dinner, after dinner, sometimes because there was that much work, but mostly because I could. You know, I was at home, I could do that. And I found loneliness a big part of the whole thing because uh, prior to that, I made some of my best friends in office and now I had no lunch breaks or coffee breaks uh, to gossip and discuss with people. So uh, over the last, so it took me a while to get into a routine to make those boundaries, set a schedule. And once that happened is when working from home became really easy, convenient, effective. And post the lockdown, I had many friends who would tell me, oh, how are you working from home? It's so tough. Uh, you know, give me a few tips. And that's when I thought of doing the session to a bigger audience where uh, more people could be benefited by some of the practices that helped me as I was working from home, right? So um, just to give a little bit of, uh, you know, what the scenario is like. So I'm gonna start with some data point. Obviously now all of us are working because of the COVID situation. Um, and it's good because we are all safe. Most of us are healthy in our home. But uh, there is a trend globally where work from home is becoming more accepted, is becoming more preferred from the companies as well as from the employees. You know, in many cases, it's a win-win uh, for, for both parties involved. So just some data point on that front. Right. So I obviously picked a survey P2020 because all of 2020 is skewed, right? So in 2019, uh, what you see on the screen is the global average of people uh, who have been giving flexible workplace policies across the globe. And uh, India is actually doing better than I would have thought. Now, um, out of this uh, same survey that surveyed about 15,000 people across 80 nations, 10% uh, predicted there was actually uh, an employee boost in uh, productivity values uh, for people. And uh, this is from the productivity perspective, and then there is the intangible, which is the loyalty perspective. So th this is actually uh, pretty interesting to know why else are people working from home besides the COVID situation. And uh, the fact that companies may be looking into this even after the situation passes. Okay. Now, I found some statistics more recent, so including all the COVID data, I suppose, on what is the biggest struggle with working remotely, right? And what you see on the screen is um, what the biggest challenges are looking like. And uh, these are right up with most of the challenges I was facing and that I will be addressing uh, in this session as well. Okay, so let's start with. Uh, the one big one, which is not being able to unplug. What this means is um, you just find yourself working all the time. You will be um, waking up in the morning, working, and so on and so forth. 
So unplugging and, um, you know, finding a balance between work-life balance, where you plug out of work and you plug into life is, is very uh, critical. Now, how do you go about doing this? You must have a daily routine and be disciplined with what you do. Now, uh, if you're someone who wakes up in the morning at say nine in the morning, just give me one minute. I think my screen is frozen. That just popped up right now. Okay. So if you're uh, one of those people who wakes up in the morning at nine and uh, you know has their bowl of breakfast, um, logs into work in their pajamas, and um, you know, pick up the breakfast on the way. This is the first step of an inefficient work schedule, because presumably, what you will do now is check some of your emails, get up to keep the bowl, uh, chit chat with your friends, family, whoever you're staying with, then probably come back to work a little, go to have a bath, come back a little, um, go back, do washing, laundry. This is superbly inefficient, because this prioritizes nothing when you're switching back and forth. You are losing focus to what you're doing and then coming back and then losing it again. Huge waste of time. Your work does not want to be thinking, uh, does not want you to be thinking about laundry or paying electricity bills uh, when you're working on that project. And the meal you're cooking does not want to be uh, thinking about, you know, what you're doing at work. Uh, you have to be present and give 100% of your energy to the task you are doing. So that is the key part about discipline. It is important to cultivate strict routine and working hours and do your household chores around them. So for instance, if I say I will start work at nine o'clock, then effectively what I'm saying is I will wake up prior to that. I will finish my morning works. I will have my breakfast. I will uh, keep myself um, ready, geared to go if what it takes for you is to you know have a bath or to change into work clothes, whatever that takes to say, I will start at uh, say nine in the morning and close at six in the afternoon. Strict working hours is the first step towards any kind of efficiency. And again, it doesn't, um, that there is some amount of flexibility because you get to choose what those hours should be, but you have to be able to enforce a hard stop at the end of the day so that you can have personal errands time for that after work and setting a target end time and date will dictate expectations of what you have from the day. So uh, having a routine is very important. Second thing that's uh, pretty important is set up a dedicated workspace. Now say I say, fine, I'm working at nine in the morning. Am I taking my laptop and sitting in front of the TV um, or am I talking to my family, you know, as I'm working on this side? You need to have a dedicated workspace. Now, obviously, maybe not everyone has the luxury of having their own uh, study room, or but, but you just need a corner, you know, a small corner. It could be a corner of a dining table. It could be a corner of a workstation. It could be just a chair set up with a stool. Some setup that says this is my workplace. And this is where I go to work in my work frame of mind. So having a dedicated workspace is extremely critical in getting you in that work frame of mind, because then when I get up from that workspace, I'm no longer doing work, I'm doing home things. Then I come back to that workspace and now I'm in the work frame of mind again. So uh, that workspace dedication, a dedicated space is very important. Third thing uh, in that is obviously, once you have that st uh, space, do exercise and stretch your breaks, uh, your back, take routine. So always factor in exercise as a part of your routine. Do not underestimate this. You know, uh, when you're actually physically at work, you will find yourself walking around a lot more. You know, you will uh, take a lot more bathroom breaks. You will find myself taking more uh, coffee breaks, um, or a colleague wants to talk, you will go for that, you will go to the meeting room, back from the meeting room. There are many instances of walking around. Uh, that gets limited when you're working from home. So you have to account at least stretching uh, in, in your daily routine very, very importantly. 
Now, the second biggest challenge uh, that people face is just distractions at home. So let's say we have set up our little workspace. This is our workspace. Um, this is my work timing. The distractions are not going away, right? It could be anything. Um, some of us have kids, some of us have pets, some of us stay with parents, spouses, roommates, um, people with music habits, people with varied kind of habits and needs. So distractions are an inevitable part of working from home. Now, again, uh, what is the key way to set that up? Uh, it's important to, again, I'm coming back to after you set your workspace, inform people about your workspace, right? So, uh, for instance, you're staying with your roommates or your parents. Um, they have to know that, guys, when I'm sitting here, uh, when I'm working, uh, you are not allowed to call me for anything frivolous. For all intents and purposes, I am an office. You cannot call me to uh, check on something on the side or, uh, you know, j just quickly check something. Nothing that you would not call me for at work. Can you call me when I'm sitting here? So that's how you have to adapt others around you to this scenario as well. You set it up and um, you inform this to others. Now, this includes your children. I understand it's, it's really difficult with children. I actually have a two-year-old myself. But uh, children, you would have realized uh, in the past few weeks are surprisingly resilient. Uh, how else are we able to keep them home? They understand rules if you enforce them strictly enough. If you tell them, this is where mama is sitting to work, this is where papa works. When papa gets up from here, papa will play from you, not while papa is sitting here. So that's how you really enforce uh, the workspace boundaries. Now, second part is, yeah, uh, set up your workspace rules. All right, the next part of distractions is social media. Social media is not a work friend, okay? When you're working, it is very easy to get sucked up into this vortex of social media conversations. It may be something small. You may just say, I'm just going to quickly check the COVID score. Um, you know, what's the number looking like? And, oh my, Maharashtra has got so many cases. Why? And then it goes on from there. And uh, let me see what the last count was like and report was like. And next thing you know, you have lost an hour or hour and a half. So social media is to be kept completely aside when you're working. There is nothing happening on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, um, Instagram, whatever is it that you guys are using. Nothing is happening in those uh, three hours between when you take breaks, you know, or those two hours between when you take break. Uh, schedule your breaks around what you need, right? And have, which segues to the next point, which is, controlled breaks. So uh, if you're taking a break, make sure when you get up from your table, you know that I'm coming back in 10 minutes. That's called a controlled break. It's not to say don't take a break. It's not to say don't check the news. It's to say I'm taking a break. This break will be for 10 minutes or for 15 minutes or half an hour, whatever is the duration you need that break for. But know that before you get up, because otherwise you will just get up one call will come, another call will come, you will have a conversation with a family member, next thing you know, another are gone. So make sure you know why you're getting up and how long you're getting up for every time you get up from your seat. Control breaks. All right. So yeah, next part is, okay, you're not a cyborg, <laughs> you are human. Uh, we do have kids at home. It's okay once in a while, people around you understand that you know we are all humans so let's not lose uh, complete track of that but uh, that again cannot be either an excuse or a reason for uh, making sure your work is not structured right because if you can structure everything else you have to be able to structure your work so that your priorities are correct uh, for everybody involved okay now the next key challenge uh, a lot of a space is loneliness when we work from home. Um, th this can creep up in many ways from uh, people who just 
miss talking all the time to people who miss being part of something bigger. Uh, and this is something that we have to uh, work on ourselves to get out of it. You know, because no one can take us out of this particular factor. So it's very important. Uh, obviously, we stay connected through video and I'm sure all companies are doing that. But uh, how many of us are actually keeping the video on during those uh, WebEx meetings or go to meeting meetings? How often are the, is the video on? Because uh, that's what really gives us that connect with a person. When the video is on, you can see them smiling at you. You can see when they're really squinting and paying attention. Um, you know, th that's what really gives us that emotional connect. And uh, just the voice with a PowerPoint and screen is, is not always enough. So as far as possible, keep the video on when you're trying to talk to people. Um, it, it really doesn't matter if you know how, because we do tend to get conscious, right? On what our background could be a little messy. Um, maybe I haven't cleared my hair for the day or comb my hair or whatever that is. But uh, let's not keep that from uh, the importance of having a connect. So keep the video on and um, try to contribute. Uh, try to be a part of the conversation. This is not to say talk whether you have something to say or not. Um, try to at least join in uh, wherever possible so that people also remember you. And uh, this is the time to maybe go a little out of your comfort zone or uh, and take the time to say hello. When you work from home, it's very easy to when you call up somebody for work, right? So you pick up the phone and say, hey, I need this work done. Uh, but that's not enough to make a connect. You have to go a little beyond that. Hey, how's it going? How's the morning looking? Um, you know, maybe what's the scenery outside your window like? Uh, how's your kid doing? So try take out the time to take hello. Uh, if you find yourself getting lonely, if you find yourself needing that human connection, you have to take that time yourself. Um, you know, no, no one's going to do that for you. So, uh, right, do take the steps uh, to rectify that. All right. And okay, the next uh, challenge is about staying motivated. Right. So what happens quite typically when you go to office daily is that uh, you may collaboratively be working on something. There are people talking to you about uh, what you're doing, how's it gone, how's that gone? And that reduces a lot more when you work from home. So it's critical for you to be able to motivate yourself and find uh, that way inside you to keep going every single day and be productive every single day. Now, the key to this is actually very simple, and this works whether you're working remotely or when you go back to work. And that is to lists. It's the simplest of things, but uh, hear me out. It's not about just having a to-do list, right? Because a to-do list is simple. Uh, I have to do this and then I note and then I note some more. And next thing I know, I've got 20, 30, uh, things on my list and I'm canceling them out as in how I do them. Um, th there's nothing particularly productive about that. Now, how you prioritize this to-do list and how you make sure you're working on it effectively is what really determines how productive your day goes and in turn uh, you are. So uh, one of the good practices that I follow and that's really worked for me and I've shared it with others and they've come back saying, hey, that's worked for me too, is I keep a to-do list. It was initially a simple Excel list and it looks something like this. Right. So it looks something like this, where uh, you have a to-do list of all the laundry tasks needed. I'm sorry, it looks like my video is not there yet. Give me a minute. Let me come back. Okay. All right. Hopefully you're able to see the screen now. Right. So this is a simple version of what I was following till a few years back, which is I put all my tasks in a to-do list uh, similar to this. 
and every morning the first thing i do is uh, put these tasks in these two buckets right so these are the items i need to do today and these are the items i need to follow up today and as the day progresses i would probably move them from done from to do to done now the, this is the first thing and the last thing i do in the day now at the end of the day if i know how many of these to do things i have done if i had five things here and i've not been able to do two then i know that i have overcompensated i know what my efficiency looks like and that helps me plan in the future for the future tasks right so it's important to break them up uh, and then at the end of the day all these items go back into the to do list again and then next morning i wake up and again i will put these uh, relevant items in the to do today and to follow up uh, and then once they are done so it helps me gauge how long a task really takes as well as uh, at the end of the day really have that quick snapshot of how things are going now one way to do this is in excel uh, there are plenty of tools available um, let me see if i have my uh, there's something called trello that i'm using nowadays which is pretty cool it has this lovely drop and uh, drag and drop interface you can make um to do points under the to do list so and then as they get done they can move from you know doing to done so this is a, a software called trello and there are plenty of alternatives out there so this is what it would look like right on deck they done uh waiting for or not and there are plenty of other softwares as well uh, that can help you do this or you can use a simple excel sheet and drag things as well uh, but, but it's, it's really a useful way to prioritize your day all right and uh, let's face it the fact is uh, working from home like working anywhere else and everything else in life some days it may not work and some days you may feel overwhelmed and things may seem a little out of hand but uh, let's see how many jobs allow you to do this at the end of a meeting <laughs> right so it's really okay you know things will be better uh, wake up the next morning uh, look at your to do list and move on and uh, remember it's always important to focus on the positive right and keep in mind it's your positives what is positive for you it's not what's positive for the other person it's not what i told you has to be oh this is what worked for me and was positive for what i'm positive about what is your positive so uh, when a group of people uh, across different age groups uh, about 25000 people took part in the survey who were asked uh, what was the biggest advantage of flexible working and uh, you know maybe you're a guy who had a back issue and had to travel um to us to work every day maybe your positive is you get to rest your back maybe you had a have a kid at home and you're not able to give him or her the time you need and now you have those two hours of commute time to spend with the child and that's your positive maybe you haven't been spending enough time with your parents maybe you haven't been doing a hobby enough you know maybe you haven't been painting or playing the guitar so each of your positives would be different right so find what your positive is and focus on that positive um, because that's what's really uh, going to get you through uh, the remote working and all of that. All of what I have shared are trips and tools to kind of get you through the work part, but to really get you through the life part, this is going to uh, help you as well. All right. So that brings me to the end of this presentation. Um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining. Uh, I sincerely hope the next time we meet, it will be in a physical space. I hope you found this useful and uh, there are tips and tricks you can take from this even after remote working is over and uh, whoever of you is back to work. Uh, I'm gonna be here remote working for a while now, so. <laughs> All right, so please stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, have a great day and have a productive day with all the tips you've learned.